Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. I don't know why the screen looks like this. Uh, <laughs> just went buggy all of a sudden. Let's see something. Oh well. Weird. Uh, we're looking at <clears throat> two Canadian blended whiskeys. The first one is from 1951. Daylight is coming. It was a full moon last night. Okay, it looks all right on playback. I'm looking at playback, but on my screen, it doesn't look right. I don't know what's going on with Chrome. Um, this is Black Velvet Reserve. I'm sorry, Black Velvet. Black Velvet from 1951. Now, some people are talking about in the 1940s. Look, all I'm going to say is the company, can't, um, Constellation Brands, says, says no, it's from 1951. They apparently have records to show that that's when it was introduced. Good morning, Ron, says John and Ellie. Good morning to you. So there may have been something in the 40s that had to do with World War II that was Canadian, okay? But this, all the evidence that I can see points to 1951. It was supposed to be called Black Label, but they decided to call it Black Velvet. Okay, it's 80 proof now. It used to be a little stronger. It's aged three years. It's $9.99 a bottle. It says right there, established 1951. Blended Canadian whiskey. Blended at birth. Distilled and aged three years in oak under the supervision of the Canadian government. So what they do with this one, they keep bragging about this on their website. They uh, blend it, then they age it. Whereas other companies age the whiskey separately, then they blend them, then they bottle them. They claim this makes it, makes it so much better. I haven't really noticed that, but uh, that's what they're saying. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. $9.99 a bottle. That's the recommended retail price. If you look on a Constellation brand sales sheet, it says recommended retail, $9.99. Okay. Rainbow Sky says, hi, Ron. Hello to you, Rainbow Sky. So put, I got a tag, uh, Black Velvet. Then we have Rich and Rare Reserve, introduced around 2010, might have been 2011. I keep saying that because I don't know for sure. I know it's one of those two years. It's got this fancy bottle, which the Whiskey Scout showed John and I in a hangout that they use in some of their other brands. I saw a whiskey last night in a big glass bottle, square bottle with a cap, a uh, cork cap, like a decanter bottle, the 1.75 liter glass bottle of a thing called Triple Crown from McCormick Distilling. It said North America, it's strange because it said North American blended whiskey, not American blended whiskey, North American. So that was making me think, did it come from Canada or is it a combination of Canadian and American? I don't know. I didn't buy it because it was $34.95 per bottle. But I mean, it's probably worth it. It's big. I saw that at Budget Saver, Labary, Labary's Budget Saver on US Highway 90, business route westbound. I like to go to Labary's Budget Saver. They have multiple locations on the West Bank because their prices are decent. And sometimes, oftentimes, they carry unusual products that nobody else carries. So it's an interesting place to visit. It's one of those plus 10% stores. In other words, every item in the store, no matter what it is, is tech. The, the, the uh, price tag is the cost, what they paid for it, and they add 10% at the register across the board. Whereas the other grocery stores, their concept, they add variable upcharge to various items. So it could be whatever, it depends on the item. And then that's the price. The price tag is what you're paying. But that plus 10% is that concept that they can add 10% to everything, undersell everybody, and hope they make up the loss from ex extreme volume sales. Does that really work? I don't know. I don't run these stores. Okay. Uh, but they seem to be 
expanding. Now they got Shoppers Value, which they're closing one in Harvey, Louisiana, so it didn't must not be making it. Although that was a struggling Win Dixie location, so that could have been a problem, just a bad location. We've got Food for Less here, which does that 10% upcharge thing. I love that black velvet ad you posted with on Facebook with Sybil Shepherd. Oh, from 1973. Yeah. Makes me want to pick up another bottle. Ah, the power of advertising. Yeah, you'll get the the whiskey, but you won't get Sybil Shepherd from 1973. But that's what that Black Velvet ad campaign did back in the 70s. They always would have some famous model on there dressed in black. And that was the their ad. They had Cheryl Teagues, uh, Christy Brinkley, I think, uh, Sybil Shepherd. Oh, it goes on and on and on. Okay. And then Telly Savalas, for some reason, uh, wasn't a famous model. All right. Uh, All right, Rich and Rare Reserve, you won't see ads in magazines for that, but you'll see Facebook stuff constantly if you if you press like on their Rich and Rare Reserve uh, Facebook page, then you'll get at least one notice a day, a very nice photo and a promotional saying, uh, I don't know, something like, it's Friday, and they'll show ribs on a grill, and be something like time to time to time to relax or whatever and they'll show a nice photo of rich and rare reserve okay so uh black velvet comes from constellation brands who has a huge portfolio of beer wine and liquor mainly wine but beer wine and liquor uh and then uh rich and rare reserve comes from sazerac who has an increasingly large portfolio of wine, but that's mostly like oddball wines, like plum wine and sake stuff, and then uh, liquor. And imported and bottled in the USA by Sazerac Company, Frankfort, Kentucky. Well, Frankfort, Kentucky is Buffalo Trace, their Buffalo Trace Distillery, formerly known as Blanton Distillery. And before that, it was called Shinley Distillery. How are you, Ron? Hope things are well. Yes, uh, I went to mass yesterday at four at a church called St. Joseph the Worker on Ames Boulevard. That's why I stopped at Labrie's Budget Saver, but um, and bought some old Milwaukee, which was fresh this time, not a year out of date. So we kept the video. We recorded it at the Hot Rod Shop. So I'll be posting that within the next week or so, and uh, I tasted a lot better. <laughs> you know, when it's fresh. My friend David said uh, he found it was heavy bodied, though. Kind of it is kind of. I wouldn't call it heavy body, but it was, it's, it's as high medium as you can go with, with it not being heavy. And he says kind of like you couldn't drink too much of it. But he, he liked it. He just thought it was. And we remarked it was heavier than the Dixie Black and Voodoo and it was heavier than the Carbach. You'll shoot your eye out, kid, that we tried the red ale. That is good. Yeah, so that St. Joseph the Worker was good. They had that good priest, uh, Father Eugene Jacques, who I have talked to before. And uh, then they had this family. They had six children. They said, well, the seventh child couldn't be here. So they said, we're from Marrero, but we uh, live in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge now. And we all, every Christmas, we like to come back here. I guess they visit their family. And, over, and they look like they were Arabs. <laughs> There's a lot of Arabs in Louisiana, Catholic Arabs, Catholic, almost all from Lebanon. And uh, some from, I guess, Syria and uh, Iraq and Palestine, especially in the Lafayette area. Like we had an attorney general, Richard Ayub, Catholic Arab and um, You go to Lafayette, they had have, they have like a department store, Abdallah's and, and all of this. Okay, so uh, a lot of people don't realize there's a history of Catholic, Arab Catholics going way back to like, you know, Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, straw appearance. This is a golden straw and this is amber, the uh, rich and rare reserve. I'm sorry, this is black velvet. Okay. Oh. 
So the black velvet's darker, huh? Huh? Never know. Are they good people? I love Old Milwaukee. The Old Milwaukee and the PBR are two of my standbys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're good people. I mean, they have jobs. They go to college. They, they run stores. They. I went to school with two Arab Catholics, a brother and a sister. Their last name was Zayden. Zayden from Lebanon. A lot of them came here because Lebanon had a terrible civil war. It broke out in 1958 and U.S. Marines went in there to stop it because, you know, that's the world police, the United States of America world police. And then it broke out in 1975 again, real bad. And then everybody was jumping in, Israel, Syria. It was a huge mess that and then so a lot of Catholics just started leaving. And uh, came to Louisiana, most of many of them because of Catholic culture in South Louisiana. But the Zaydens, and they used to make food like kibbe. <laughs> All right. So we have a lot of Arab restaurants around here. Biblos, Phoenicia, Babylon Cafe. But the, the ones that are Iraqis, they won't say they're from Iraq because, you know, a lot of Americans are ignorant. So they'll say, oh, we're we're Mesopotamian. Or we're Babylonian and the Iranians, there's really no Catholics from Iran, but they'll say we're Persian. Because if they say they're Iraqis, you know, you might have some people that might want to fight them or something. I hate y'all, bunch of Muslims. Y'all probably want to bomb me, and they're like, "We're that's why we escaped Iraq because we were being bombed by Muslims, and we're we're Catholics." But you know, most Americans are ignorant. They'll say, "I hate Iranians, those Arabs." It's like, okay, well, Iranians are Persians. They speak Persian. They don't speak Arabic. Arabic is not an ethnic group; it's a language group. Okay. I used to try to teach students this, and they learn too, because I would teach them. I think I prefer Black Velvet to the Rich and Rare. The Rich and Rare Reserve is better than the Black Velvet Reserve, in my opinion. It's strange because the Bel Black Velvet Reserve is aged for eight years. I know, right? Okay, so here we go. Got to kind of not look, because the parents could give it away. I think this is going to be kind of like a tie. It shouldn't be a tie, but the price is only a dollar difference. And in my case, it was the same price. I paid nine and nine. Try that again. No, 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 no. I paid $9.99 for the Black Velvet, and I paid $9.99 for the black, uh, Rich and Rare Reserve. Same price. And it just smells like um, corn, out corn liquor. Last night at the Hot Rod Shop, the guy, Kevin, was like, look, I got diesel. I said, hey, ain't no way I would try that. That's a pure moonshine. If you said, this is moonshine, I said, I know that. 190 proof. <laughs> um, it's the rival brand to Everclear. You could make your own bourbon from a diesel or Everclear. Assuming you had charred oak barrels that were never used before and that you had patience to wait at least two years, but you wouldn't save any money. I mean, you might. You wouldn't. All right. You can you can buy straight bourbon for $9.99 or less sometimes. Yeah, less. I didn't say it was good. I said you could buy it. Okay, now this one is much more pungent in the nose. So it's getting me a little thrown off. You know what I mean? Let's try this again. Mild. Pungent. Very mild, sweet corn. Pungent, full-bodied. 
bread like barley and with corn and um, hmm, something else. <laughs> okay. Already, I think this is the black velvet and I think that's the rich and rare reserve. Huh, well, they sure don't smell alike. That's, there's no doubt about that. Babylonian, they worship Pazuzu? Yeah, no, they worship God. They just say that, Babylonian, because they don't want people to know I mean, most Americans, they'll say, Iraq, Iraq. And you say, here's a blank map of Asia. Show me Iraq. They wouldn't know where it is. When the United States invaded the Philippines in 1898, attacked Spain. When the United States attacked Spain in 1898, invaded the Philippines. Even President McKinley had to admit he had to go look at a globe. He didn't even know where it was. He said, where is that located? <laughs> He had heard of the Philippine Islands, but he didn't know where they were. All right. <laughs> nice, huh? Um, Love your reviews. Thank you, says Josh Patterson. You're welcome. Yeah, William McKinley, he says he was a world a world war. Yeah, so uh, no, I don't like to use that term. He was a, a veteran of the war, the invasion of the South. You remember that? 1861, the war to prevent Southern secession, I guess you call it. The war against the Confederate States of America. That's a proper term. But he was a veteran of that war. And then he, he was the last veteran of that war to become president of the United States. And he, but he didn't know where the Philippine Islands were. That's okay. He said he wanted to help our lit quote our little brown brothers unquote. Except the little brown brothers hadn't actually asked for help. <laughs> Matter of fact, they wanted to help him so much they forced him to become a U.S. territory from uh, 1898 until uh, 1946. And then a U.S. protectorate until 1992. After that, the Filipino government demanded the U.S. close down their their naval base and air air force base there. Because you might remember that there was a uh, kind of like a civil war broke out in the Philippines, kind of like that. But the Philippines, they have those kind of conflicts, but it might only be 1% of the population fighting. But in other words, kind of like the Roman Empire, one click started fighting the other click. So you know what I mean? One gang and their, and their people was fighting another the other gang and their people to be the president. And of course, and then the United States military intervened to try to uh, pick the gang and both gangs got mad. They said, ho, 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 we always do this. That's what we do here in the Philippines. We have internal conflicts, okay? But we don't need you intervening in our conflict. We're not a colony. So they told the US to get out, which they did. Okay, but that's a true story. All right, look it up. Okay. I mean, I mean, it really is a true story. I even had video of the U.S. airplanes flying over. See, this one here has more of a plum wine additive flavor to it, which is making me think Sazerac. Yeah. Yeah. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Talking about Canada, did you know the United States invaded Canada three times and lost all three times? True story.
1775, 1812, and 1813. Invaded three times and got beat. But let's not bring up those inconvenient facts, okay? Oh, this one's much more harsh, straight alcohol, grain alcohol. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, baby. Kevin last night at the hot rod shop said, I went to Colorado once and I brought a bottle of black velvet with me. I said, you did? He said, yeah, it was rough. I said, what do you think for $9.99? He said, exactly. People might say, this is kind of bitey. Yeah, it's bitey, all right. Oh. Oh, but is it any good? Uh, oh, well, uh. I don't know about that. It's okay. I would rather drink Ancient Age, which is a three-year bourbon. Okay, I'm something comparable. Nine ninety-nine. Ancient Age is age three years, just like Black Velvet, and it's smooth. It's got charred oak. It's no jackhammer bite to it. Oh no 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 no. No, no, no. Or I could go to CVS and get J -W J -T Jethro T boots for $8.99. I wouldn't do it because I don't feel like it, but I could do it. I'm, what am I talking about? I can go to Walmart and get Stedman Select for $19.99 for a 1.75 milliliter. I mean, yeah, <laughs> liter, 1.75 liter glass, not plastic, glass handle. Got no handle on it. You know what I'm talking about. Big old bottle at Walmart for $19.94. Way cheaper than this. Way cheaper than $9.99 for $7.50. And way smoother. Way nicer. You say, but that's bourbon. That's Canadian whiskey. I know that. <laughs> They're both 80 proof. They're both aged three years. One tastes good, the other one tastes not so good. Okay, to me, I'm, I'm saying to me, you might love Black Velvet. You might say, who are you to criticize Black Velvet? You American, damn you. I understand that you might be from Canada and you'd be very proud of Black Velvet. I'm not an anti-Black Velvetite. I don't hate Black Velvet. <sighs> I don't want to ever drink it again though. All right. Ouch. Ouch. Wow. Josh, he retracted a message and Rainbow Sky retracted a message. Sometimes I do that. You know why I retract messages? It's never because of what I said. It's because of grammar. Like I'll do stuff and I needed a comma or I forgot to, or I spelled the word wrong and it won't let you edit it. You can't edit it. And I can't stand having stuff done on there that's improper grammar because it make you know, I say people are going to think I don't know how to spell or I, I can't write. So the only way that you just got to delete it. It's so irritating. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Love your reviews. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So, okay. SFD66 says, good morning, America. How are you? Well, I wasn't riding on the city of New Orleans, but I'm doing okay. Danny, as much as I love America, America always has a reason to help people, right? The Roman Empire was always going to help people, like they helped the Jews fight the Greeks. And they, the Jews said, well, thanks for helping. I guess your army can leave now. And the Romans said, oh, no, you see, the Roman army is here to help you. We're never going to leave because you need us. Then the Jews realized, oh, we're stuck. Yeah, that's right. And then John's telling Danny, good morning. And then he says, good, John. It's early afternoon here in Scotland. Yep. 
Yeah, it's they're much further ahead in the timeline than us. I still need to try some plum wine. Never had any. Yeah, we use it as a descriptor for cheap whiskey a lot. Yeah, I've only had homemade plum wine at the Knights of Columbus. This guy named uh, Leroy, but everybody calls him Mike. <laughs> and he made his own homemade plum wine, but it's bad. If you're listening, Mike, I'm sorry. That's my evaluation. <laughs> and I, I drank it free, right? I drank it for, but I cut. I drank. I, ugh, it was like full of sugar. It tasted like sugar wine. Ugh. And it, other people at the at the hall were saying that. Oh, I can't drink that stuff. Boy. I said he must have added sugar to it. They said he did. He always. Put, what did they say? And then uh, one of the other guys said he always does that. He puts too much sugar in everything. I would prefer it if it had been straight plums, but maybe they've been too tart or sharp or, um, yeah, you know, like too much acidic, but that would have been fine for me, better than all that sugar. Okay. Well, okay, Rich and Rare Reserve wins. It wins by a lot. It's way better to me. It's smoother. It's sweeter. It's more candy-like. And it ain't even that great. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Rich and Rare Reserve is that good. I would not repurchase it. I would recommend it with, with a very uh, reserved recommendation, qualified recommendation. You could try just to say you tried it. Okay, it's not. But Black Velvet? Yeah, like I don't think I would recommend buying it. I mean, you could buy it just to say I bought it. But um, it's pretty harsh. I mean... I'm not figuring out the benefit of it. What else could I buy for $9.99 that's better? I just told you. Ancient age, bourbon. That kills it. It's, there's no... I mean, it's a joke. Or uh, Here's an example. Why would you pay $9.99 for Black Velvet when you could get uh, Canadian Crest at Albertsons for $6.49? from Sazerac, that's way better. Yeah, I know it's flavored and all of it, but it's way better. Why would you buy Black Velvet when you could go to Walmart and buy Canadian Limited for $7.42? Or Rich and Rare for $7.49? I don't know why it's always seven cents more. I mean, those are all better to me. Or you could buy Caliber, if you like that, you know, that beautiful plastic bottle. <laughs> Caliber Canadian Whiskey for, for $5.96 but I've never tasted it. I can't say it's better. <laughs> I'm just assuming it's better because it comes from Sazerac at the same, it's all the same Canadian whiskey with natural flavors. I just assume it's better. I don't know. I never tried it. I want to try it so bad. I got to try it. Gotta try. Okay. So that's it. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Constellation Brands, but y'all can't come after me because I have praised your product so much. Okay. Right. Taylor wine, all the Taylor table wines, all the Taylor dessert wines. I praise Manischewitz. So, and that's Constellation Brands. So you can't come after me. A lot of these companies, I think, hire a robot and it automatically puts them down. It like comes after you if you criticize. My friend Paul was saying that. He said, yeah, they do that. They hire like people to make negative comments if you criticize their beer or something. It'd be like, you wonder why they had these fake accounts saying bad things. He said, yeah, don't you realize it could be like a, a, a they're working for some company, like a, a, a service that, that goes after people that criticize their product. Apparently hotel companies do that. Like, you know, if you criticize, I went to the Days Inn in Fort Worth, Texas. It was terrible. When my, it might've just been like not that great, but people like to exaggerate you know they're exaggerating because like you read the other comments and they don't match up with what somebody was saying. It's, it could be an employee that got fired, you know, and he's saying, but it, there's a whole bunch of convoluted con controversy with these reviews and comments. You got to wonder if there's not a third party involved and it's somehow fake. So that could happen with your videos. If, if you're a person that makes video reviews and you say something negative about a certain company, they might come at you. But in a, in a, cryptic way you see in a um undercover way ah ancient age such a gem 
You're right. I tried Jack Daniels honey back in my day. My arms became my feet. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that Jack Daniels honey. Oh no, sir. I tried it at the distillery and I said, that's enough for me. One ounce is enough. Taylor Marsala versus Krabari Sellers. Marsala taste challenge coming up later today. Oh, that should be interesting. I think Krabari will win. Yes, I think Krabari will win too because Krabari is a little richer and more full bodied. And that's no knock against Taylor Marsala. Taylor Marsala is great, but Krabari is better, greater. Now, they were teasing me last night at the Hot Rod Club because the guy had a big old bottle of Fairbanks California sherry over there by the pot of chili. I said, what do you do? You cook with that stuff? Yeah, I put some in the chili. And he was describing how it changed the taste of the chili. I said, I drank it. And they all looked at me. And my friend David was embarrassed. Like he said, well, that's made for cooking. I said, I don't care what it's made for. I like to drink it. I'm not saying you shouldn't cook with it. I say, I like to drink it. He said, I know you do. I know you do. Like, okay. Anyway, what do you think of Bullet Frontier Whiskey? Yeah, it's okay. Bullet. Uh, I don't have enough experience really to comment on that. I'm going to say I, no comment. I'm going to retract that comment where I said it's okay. I want to retract that. I think nothing of it because I don't have enough experience to give it a good even comment. So forget what I said. I can't wait to try some Fairbanks products. Oh, yeah, you're going to love Fairbanks, man. <laughs> you're going to love Fairbanks, man. It's great for cooking. Okay. Uh, and that chili was so good last night. And the guy, and then I blew my nose and the guy said, what, it was too spicy for you? I said, no, I got sinus problems. The slightest bit of spice or cold air, or if I chew menthol gum or anything like that, eat ice cream, my nose is like, I got to blow it. I said, I, I wanted to tell him, actually, this chili could be a lot spicier for me. I don't like, I don't mind super hot stuff. I just, that that's just typical for me. All right, so here we go. This is the, this is the, this is the black velvet. Oh Lord, it says rich and rare reserve. Can you tell me what just happened here? See on my screen, it's only showing me not full screen, but I think something's screwed up right now on the internet and it's showing what you would see like fitting into that box. I don't know, it's craziness. Let me see what happens when I put this full screen. No, it's correct there. I don't know, I don't get it. Somebody told me, when are you gonna buy a seven, when are you gonna buy a 1080 HD camera? You know, I mean, you got, Let me put it to 720. He's like, you have, oh, I feel played. You are full screen. I feel played, John and LA. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, says room. I feel played, John and LA. You know why? Remember the other day I was saying your video looked blurry? <laughs> I forgot I had, uh, <laughs> I had YouTube on Google Chrome set to 144. I had, I had it set at low resolution. I didn't have it set at 720. Oh, I feel stupid. Okay, so sorry about that. But yeah, Wi-Fi, but you were saying Wi-Fi is a problem for um, live broadcast. And I think it is. You want it, you want that hard wire anyway. But I, <laughs> okay, now look clear because I got it set on 720. I don't have a 1080 uh, hangout camera though. Okay, I got to start over now. I know I ain't going to pour it. Like I'm not gonna pour that much, but I have to. I have to re. When these kind of emergency situations come up, then you just gotta go into it. What the hell just happened here? It's like the movie The Godfather Part Two. I want to find out what the hell just happened here. Which is a comical scene because it's pretty obvious what just happened here. Okay. And you're in the U.S. Senate, and you're that dumb. Round two. Yeah. Okay. I 
I can't see up close with these glasses on. I'm I'm far I'm nearsighted, you know what I mean? Like but I don't need glasses to see up close. I need glasses for far away. Okay, black velvet. Okay, so it was lighter. Okay. I taste pretty damn harsh. <laughs> Excuse my language. I just went to mass. Went to confession yesterday. I got a lot of weaknesses, and my mouth is one of them. All right. Um, Rich and Rare Reserve. See, the Rich and Rare Reserve is darker. I don't know. Maybe I mixed them up earlier. I've done this before. Honestly, though, they're really, neither one of them is really that good. <laughs> you say, you made a 30-minute video to tell me that? Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're not that good. <laughs> I'm going to start grading whiskey in January, January 1st, 2019. But if I was given a grade right now, and I'm not, but if let's just say I was given a, let's just say that I was given a score at this particular moment in time. If I was given a score, I would say this one is a, a C, it's average. And this one is a, Wish I had claws. It's a C minus, mate. I don't know. It's just like, man. You say, oh, you drink something that threw you off your taste. No, I drank coffee this morning. It ain't nothing threw off my taste. Haha, -ha, you're right. It's still blurry, though. I'm getting a 50 foot cable to remedy my problems. I'll run it along the wall and plug it in directly to my modem in the living room. Yeah, that's going to probably solve the problem. I'm not too shocked that this one wasn't very easy. These two aren't very different, in my opinion. Yeah, they're not. And I don't care what Black Velvet talks about. Oh, we we blend it at birth and all of this. That's great. You blend it at birth and then you age it. Still not good. Bourbon makes my mouth numb. The roof, it's numb. Oh, well. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm ending this. I'm going to tell you right now. Neither one of these could in any way, in any way, compete with ancient age bourbon. And that's like a known cheap brand. You say, but that's bourbon. That's Canadian whiskey, two different styles. I, I know that. I understand that. Okay. One's from Canada's Canadian blended whiskey. The other one's straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. I understand it. But they're still whiskey and they're at the grocery store. So... But ancient age would destroy either one of these. Destroy it. You say, well, what about well, if you're gonna cross style? If you're gonna cross style, what about uh 100 Piper Scotch? 100 Piper Scotch. Good question. 100 Piper Scotch would destroy both of these. It wouldn't even be a contest. It would be an it would be embarrassing. That's how much better 100 Pipers is over both of these. And 100 Pipers ain't even that good. Okay. Now, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm calling it. I always tell people this. People will comment on my video and say, well, I, I apologize, but this is how I feel about the beer. I say, why are you apologizing? You have to call it as you see it. You don't worry about if I get mad or not. If I get mad, tough for me, I need to go home and cry in a towel. If I say a beer is most excellent, you say you thought it was substandard. You got to say that. This is not time for baby cry. I've run into enough baby cry on the internet from other reviewers. Baby cry. They want to take their ball and go home. And why? Because they couldn't justify their score? 
Somebody tells me, well, I scored this BR 55 out of 100. It's pretty good. I said, what? You're saying you're saying it's 45 percent bad. How can that be good? Would you fly in an airplane that had a successful flight record of 55 percent? I wasn't trying to go after this person. I'm just asking, why does why would you say a 55 out of 100 is good? To me, that's terrible. And he got so angry and offended, he never would come on a video again with us and stop talking to me. Well, he was talking about me behind my back. I was alerted to that by another English beer review. But I said, oh, well, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. Don't say that. And then you can't back it up. I'm saying these two don't taste that good. And why is that? Because they don't taste that good. These would be more like, but they wouldn't even be 55 out of 100. Neither one of these would be 55 out of 100. <laughs> Neither one of these is 45% bad. I think if it was 45% bad, you could barely drink it. You might be able to drink it, but you'd probably get sick. I'm saying these are a C, 70 to 75 out of 100. Okay. Now that to me makes sense. Okay. Now I remember Eric. Uh, Thomas Metal 75, he was all upset. He was like, why did you offend that person? Why did you attack that person? They have a right to give their score. I said, no one ever said they didn't have a right to give their score. And I wasn't attacking. I was asking a question. That's all I was doing is saying, why did you do this? Then he, he, he began to realize later that maybe I was right. And then he let it go because if you can't, handle the heat why are you on the internet doing reviews okay and i'm not talking about troll attacks ugly attacks comments like that i'm not talking about that i'm talking about legitimate measured constructive evaluations of your review that's what i'm talking about and that's all i did and i'll continue to do it and if people ask me i'll tell them this is why this is why I'm giving this score. I'm, I'm explaining this, am I not? Very clearly explaining this. Nice glasses, by the way, says Rainbow Scott. Well, you can thank Johnny Neely for that because he gave me these glasses as a gift. Canadian Club standard is only $8.99 to $9.99. Well, it's about $11.99 here, actually. It beats both of these easily. Oh, these two, these two whiskeys compared to Canadian Club is a pathetic joke. A pathetic joke. Canadian Club destroys these two without any. It's not even it's they're not even in the same universe. If y'all don't see me on the Internet anymore. You'll know what happened. I don't think Sazerac plays plays games with people that criticize their product. They're not going to send me a bill. They're going to send a, a hit squad. There'll be war in the streets. Why did you imply that Russia should have befriended Hitler's Germany in a video debate? I never implied that. What did I, when did I ever imply that Russia should have befriended Germany in a video debate? I said things like it was like two gangsters working together on the surface, but underneath plotting against each other. I said that. I never said any. I might have said something like they shouldn't have been fighting against each other because it was counterproductive. Obviously, with 20 million people killed, wouldn't call that productive. Misunderstood then. You're right. I think you misunderstood. I never implied anything like that okay well um so that was very interesting but perplexing to say the least this this taste challenge was one of the more confusing taste challenges i've ever done um but i shouldn't be surprised because neither product is that dynamic it's um yeah, it's got a fancy bottle. It looks pretty, but uh, that's about all it. That's about what you get from it. it. 
we need to worry about what's more we need to worry more about what's in the bottle and what's in the bottle it ain't that great all right it's enough i don't want to go on a rampage against it you say oh you drank too much you're getting all crazy no 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 actually i expected to not really enjoy these i was thinking this morning okay i'm gonna do a taste challenge I'm gonna have that jackhammer smoothness like your face being caressed with sandpaper type appreciation of it and that's exactly what happened so uh tuesday christmas day i think i'm gonna do a double up and that'll clear up the uh scheduling issue well it's gonna probably be screwed up for new year's but uh we'll try to clear it up uh that will be black velvet reserve versus uh rich and rare reserve it's gonna be the same thing as today i think like a real screwed up You know what I mean? Like, pfft, pay you ten ninety nine, and that's what you're gonna get, type of situation. And uh, then we're gonna bring in uh, Seagram's VO. <laughs> oh Lord, Seagram's VO is gonna murder these two. I mean, I feel, I really, I feel, I feel bad for Rich and Rare Reserve going up against Seagram's VO. I can see why Sazerac bought Seagram's VO. Don't even mention this the VO gold. That would really be a that's going to be a catastrophe. All right. Anyway, that's it. You're right. They should have worried more about the whiskey, not the bottle design. Hey, I can't explain it because it sells pretty well. I mean, I know it sells. People buy it. So why? I don't know. They now rich and rare. I can see that rich and rare. It's sad. Like the 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 uh, base model is better than the um, luxury edition. But anyway, to me, it is. The base model is better than the luxury edition. All right, so uh, I did a. I got to go answer a bunch of comments. I'm going to go walk a mile and a half today. We got the Saints game coming up at 3:25 Central Time. That's a big deal. So um, I got to answer all these comments. I'm not ignoring people. I just had. I was at the hot rod shop last night. Like I said, I was in New Orleans. Oh well, I mean Jefferson Parish. I never made it actually to New Orleans, but um, last night. So all right, thanks for watching this video production. So. It turned out the way I thought it was going to turn out kind of screwed up, but um, hey, I didn't make the whiskey. It's not my fault. <laughs>